The Tennessee Titans were flat out embarrassed by Malik Willis and the Green Bay Packers, and everyone is to blame. I'll explain on today's edition of Locked on Titans. You are Locked on Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked on Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Roland, Titans fans. Today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. The Tennessee Titans get outright embarrassed by Malik Willis and the Green Bay Packers 30-14 to and fall to 0-3 on the season while Will Levis will get a big share of the blame. The reality is everyone is at fault for this loss. I'll dive into it. Before I do, do want to thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free. You're not going to beat that anywhere else. Make sure that you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day here on the Locked on Titans podcast. Speaking of every day, shout out to my everydayers out there tuning in Monday through Friday. Couldn't do it without you guys. If you aren't an everydayer, you need to be one. But with all that being said, make sure that you throw a thumbs up on the video, throw a tighten up down in the chat. But again, the big takeaway here is that this is an outright embarrassment for the Tennessee Titans. Everyone within the organization should be utterly embarrassed from this result to trade away Malik Willis, because he wasn't good enough to be on your roster. And then to have him come back in with this Green Bay Packers team on your home turf and beat you 30 to 14. And it should have been even worse. That's the reality here is it should have been even worse. The Packers hurt themselves in a lot of situations. And look, to me, and it's different because I was at this game. Obviously, my YouTube folks, the show is coming out way later than it normally does. I had to drive home from Nashville after the game to be able to have an internet connection to record the show. So, like, my experience is maybe going to be a little bit different from some of you guys that watched on television and are just upset about the product that you saw on TV, and you're more than welcome. But for me, to be in that stadium and to hear, go, pack, go, Go, pack, go, over and over and over again. And I tweeted it out on Twitter, at Tic Tac Titans. This was an away game for the Tennessee Titans. Thoroughly an away game. And I know a lot of you guys who are from the area, you're used to this. I mean, the Nashville is a destination sh- city. Obviously, fan bases are going to flock to Nashville when they can. But that may be a reality of the situation, but it doesn't take away the sting of things to have Malik Willis and the Green Bay Packers come into Nashville and thoroughly undress and embarrass the Titans at all levels. Coaching, offense, defense. I mean, at least the Titans special teams didn't blow up on them this week. That's something I guess we can hold in our hearts, right? But to have the game go the way that it went while also being in a sea of green, I kept making the joke, there was more green than St. Patty's Day out there. So. It's an embarrassment for the franchise to have your home games be an away game. It's an embarrassment for the football team to drop to 0-3 the way that they played. It's an embarrassment for the franchise that it was Malik Willis who did it to them. And I'm going to talk about Malik Willis a ton at the end of the show. So if you're somebody who came to the comment section to tell me how dumb I am about the things I've said about Malik Willis, you'll have your day at the end of the show. Don't you worry. But... I just want to look at this from the Titans perspective, first and foremost, of course. And like I said at the beginning, everyone is to blame for this. Number one, and I know that everybody's going to pile on Will Levis, and they should. Will Levis, it's going to be the same thing. I'm already seeing it. This game is a thousand percent not on Will Levis. This is, yes, it is. Why is this game not on Will Levis? It's not all of his fault. But why are we absolving Will Levis of blame? He did it again. He made another mind-melting, boneheaded mistake and threw a pick six right to Jair Alexander. Literally right to him. There was no opening at all. How can you throw that football? 
And at that point in the game, it's 10 to 7. You throw that pick six to Jair Alexander. Now it's 17 7. The game is over. The Titans only scored 14. They've only scored 17 as their high so far this year. So Will Levis threw the game losing interception. Now we didn't think because it was so early in the game that it would be more points than the Titans were going to get. But the reality is, is Will Levis once again gave points to the other team. He has eight turnovers this year. Yes, we're going to talk about the offensive line. Make no mistake about it. The offensive line is bad. But what I don't want to see is, I don't want to see Titans fans excusing Will Levis because the O-line is bad. Two things can happen at the same time. Two things, okay? Number one, the offensive line is garbage. Okay. But also, Will Levis has been terrible. Like, both of those things can coexist at once. Just because the offensive line is really bad doesn't mean that everything that Will Levis does is excused. Like, I'm not buying that. I'm not here for that. Will Levis has killed this football team. He has been awful. Will Levis has been the worst starting quarterback in the NFL this year, besides maybe Bryce Young. He's been worse than Bo Nix. He's been worse than Daniel Jones. He's been worse than Deshaun Watson. Will Levis right now is the worst starting quarterback in the NFL. So, yes, the offensive line, terrible. But Will Levis has been terrible also and killed the team. I'm sick of seeing people make excuses for him. I'm done with it. Like, no, it's not the offensive line's fault that Levis threw a pick six. That's not on the O-line. So, I just wanted to get that off my chest. Will Levis is not absolved to blame here. He was awful. And again, just because you make a couple of good plays, if you make these mind-melting turnovers and give points to the other team, that erases all the good. It erases all of the good when you do stupid stuff like that. And he did it again for a third week in a row. Now the offensive line. Of course, the offensive line is despicable. The Titans had 33 rushing yards, bullied up front, absolutely bullied by the Packers. Gave up eight sacks, tied for the most in a single game this year. I mean, I don't know what hard-hitting analysis I could possibly provide. This offensive line is awful. And Nicholas petit got benched for Jalen Duncan. Jalen Duncan is terrible, too. There are no answers. And the person to blame for that is Rand Carthon and probably Brian Callahan too. Rand Carthon did not address right tackle. They decided as an organization that they did not need to address right tackle in any way, that they could try NPF and they could try Jalen Duncan and they could have John Ajuku starting during the offseason. The offensive line is an organizational failure and it goes to Rand Carthon. Rand Carthon deserves the blame for the offensive line. So, again, Will Levis, you don't get to get out of here scot-free. You deserve your blame, too. Because, really, Will Levis screwed the pooch with that pick six interception. If that's just simply a punt, the Titans probably stay in that game. But you blew it out and changed the game completely. The O-line, despicable. But that goes on Rand Carthon. And then the defense. Let's stop acting like this defense is great. It ain't. It ain't. Actually, let's talk more about the Titans' defense, and I'm going to give an apology to Malik Willis at the end of the show as well. Do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by DoorDash. So, you guys have heard about DoorDash. I love DoorDash personally. I probably use DoorDash multiple times a week, if I'm honest. And there's a reason why. DoorDash is fantastic. You get whatever you need directly to you. Quick, easy, and that's the way it should be. Whether you want a good meal, whether you want groceries, whether you want retail items. Saturday night, I went out in Nashville. I DoorDashed some wings to the hotel room after a long night out in Nashville on Saturday, and they were absolutely delicious, and DoorDash delivered that for me. All right, guys, make sure that you go to DoorDash. You use the promo code LOCKEDFALL24 
for up to 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more in your first order. Limited time offer only. Terms apply. Promo is not valid for orders containing alcohol. DoorDash, your door to game day greatness, your door to more. Download the DoorDash app now to order your game day favorites. Must be 21 plus to order alcohol. Drink responsibly. Alcohol only available in select markets. Titans fans, let's continue today's recap of the Tennessee Titans 30 to 14 loss to the Green Bay Packers. Um, talked about blame. That's really what it comes down to, right? We all want to know who's to blame for what's happened here. And specifically looking at this game, Will Levis, big chunk of blame. Offensive line, massive chunk of blame. But it goes past that. That's where the attention will be. But Rancarthon failed this team by not addressing right tackle and free agency. Period. No question about it. I know that a lot of people are going to talk about Brian Callahan. And yeah, you got to blame the coaching staff here. But in my blame tree, Brian Callahan and the coaching staff is at the bottom. I am blaming Will Levis. I am blaming the offensive line. I am blaming Rand Carthon. I'm blaming the players and the people who picked the players before I'm blaming the coaches. Now, the coaches deserve their fair share of blame. But again, they're just low on the totem pole. But the reality is, along with all that blame, is the defense. This defense got bullied by the Green Bay Packers offensive line. Bullied. All right? Absolutely bullied. You look at the number one thing that stands out for me, tackling. Despicable tackling. Now, when I'm at the game, when I'm actually at a game, it's not as easy for me to notice individual players. That's why I'm not doing tighten up, tighten down. I got to go watch the film and get a better idea of individual performances. But overall, as a whole, the tackling was despicable. I did see one player miss a bunch of tackles, and that was Jamal Adams. Barely played, but hurt the team in an immense way, which is why everybody said this is a low-risk, high-reward. No, it's not. It's a low-risk, low-reward signing because Jamal Adams is terrible at football. And every time he's been out on the field, other than the very first tackle that he ever made for this team in Week 2, Jamal Adams has been awful for this team, giving them nothing. So a bunch of missed tackles that killed the team, got out physical, got bullied by the Packers. N no other way to explain it. Now, some other things that stood out to me where the defense is immensely to blame in this game is the third and long conversions. How many were there? Three or four? It's third and 15, it's third and 18, it's third and 20. And somehow the Titans allow the Packers to convert. Zero pressure. The Titans sacked Malik Willis two or three times, I think it was. Two times, I think, two or three. But for the most part, zero consistent pressure. And that's going to be this team's downfall on defense. And it's the same thing that I've been talking about, edge rusher, edge rusher, edge rusher. Arden Key sucks, okay? He is not a starter in the NFL. And on the first Malik Willis escape early in the game, it was Arden Key who lost contain again. It's just over and over, undisciplined, out of control, lose contain, let the quarterback get outside. But Arden Key's not alone in that. Obviously, the Titans' whole defense is culpable this week for how they let Malik Willis out of the gates. But the third and long conversions were backbreakers. And I saw Kenneth Murray get beat, which Kenneth Murray is got awful in pass coverage. So why are we surprised by this? I saw Legereus Sneed get beat on one as well. It's just the tackling, the third and long conversions, this defense deserves a ton of blame for this performance. We're not going, what I'm not going to do is act like, oh, you know, the defense held in as long as they could and the offense, no, the defense was terrible. Despicable. And once again, zero turnovers. This defense cannot get a turnover, again, for a second year in a row. Just simply cannot force a turnover to save their lives. I would venture to say that the Titans are last in the NFL in turnover margin right now. 
I didn't check that, but do I need to? If they're not last, they're close. They're just absolutely leaking on offense and doing nothing on defense to force any turnovers. And what forces turnovers on defense? Pressure on the quarterback, which the Titans do not get. They do not get pressure on the quarterback. And let's just call it what it is. Another stupid penalty from Jeffrey Simmons that resulted in seven points for the other team. That's back-to-back weeks that Jeffrey Simmons has handed the other team seven points on a platter. The Titans' best player has killed them with stupid mistakes. A holding. A holding on a missed field goal. Why are you holding on a field goal attempt? And then instantly, screen pass, missed tackle, missed tackle, missed tackle, pathetic tackle, missed tackle, touchdown Packers. It's on Jeffrey Simmons. Just like last week, hitting Aaron Rodgers in the face mask. The Titans captains on offense and defense, Will Levis and Jeffrey Simmons, are giving the other team points every week. When the best players on the team, yeah, MPF sucks. Arden Key sucks. Jamal Adams sucks. And they do sucky stuff. But when you're, what's supposed to be your best players are giving the other team points every week, how are you going to win? How are you going to be close? You're not. You're not. That's how. So, again, to me, this could have been even worse. The Packers had 10 penalties for 75 yards. The Packers went one for three in the red zone. The Titans should have got beat by 30. It should have been like 44 to 10 or 14. Like this should have been an outright blowout even more than it already was at 30 to 14. The Packers did not play a clean game. And that is salt in the wound when you look at it honestly. The Packers made a bunch of mental mistakes. The Packers had like three drops, big drops on open plays. Think about Jaden Reed at the goal line dropping that pass. Think about, uh, I think it was Christian Watson who dropped the pass for the Packers that would have been a first down. The Packers had multiple drops. The Packers had 10 penalties for 75 yards. They were one for three in the red zone. The Packers should have beat the Titans by even more. This is an outright embarrassment. Outright embarrassment for the Titans. And you know what? you got to give all the credit in the world to Malik Willis. A lot of us, a lot of people in my comments, a lot of people who watch this show, we were wrong about Malik Willis. It was the Titans being a god-awful organization, not Malik Willis. And how many times do we got to see this till we get it? It's the Titans. It's the Titans. A clown organization. No other way around it. I mean, I've been a fan for 25 years. The truth is the truth. This is a clown organization. You know, that's just the reality. Whether you want to accept it, does that mean that we bail? No, the team's got me for life at this point. But the proof is the proof. The truth is the truth. The Ruth is the Ruth. I don't even know what that means. I'm just, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in dismay, man. I'm in dismay. No doubt about it. But Malik Willis deserves his credit. He absolutely does, and I'm going to give it to him right now. Do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel right now. Again, America's number one sports book for a reason. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same exact page where you can place your bets. It is an all-encompassing hub for football information. And right now, you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Titans, next week against the Dolphins, might as well just go ahead and throw that $5 bet on the Miami Dolphins money line because this team is bad. All right? So make sure that you visit America's number one sportsbook at FanDuel.com. Hi!
Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Demoralizing, embarrassing, awful, garbage, whatever you want to call it. That's what it was. You know what I mean? The season isn't shut down. They got to keep playing, but, you know, I would understand if uh, some of you people out there decided that you had better things to do with your Sunday afternoons. Uh, I'm going to be watching, and I'm always going to be breaking it down with you guys, so make sure that you get subscribed, stay subscribed. Thank you for making Locked on Titans your first listen. Big shout out to all the people who showed me love while I was in Nashville this weekend. Uh, Connor at uh, Luke Bryan's, um, another Connor, <laughs> a lot of Connors that I talked to at the game, sat right by me. It was nice to see that. Uh, Donald. Met you in the parking lot. A um, couple other people who, I'll be honest, I just forgot the names. You know what I mean? Um, at the Valentine, had a guy buy me a brewski. Thank you. Uh, met with another guy right outside the stadium. Promised he would give me his uh, his Xfinity <laughs> Wi-Fi login if needed. Uh, sorry that I don't remember all the names, but I even had some Packers fan who recognized me from Locked On Packers. That was really cool, really cool, and everybody was really nice to my dad as well. So thank you all for that. But Malik Willis, I am sorry. I'm sorry, Malik Willis. I apologize. I was wrong about you. I was wrong. I was 100% wrong. Malik Willis, I have said Malik Willis is not an NFL player. I have said Malik Willis should go to the XFL. I've said a lot of things about Malik Willis, and I've hated on Malik Willis quite a bit. And I think that the reality is, is my view of Malik Willis came from Malik Willis's time with the Titans. And in my mind, from what I saw from Malik Willis, he was all the things I said. He wasn't good enough. He wasn't an NFL player. But look, but once again, once again, like I was just saying at the end of our last conversation, the reality is it was the Titans organization that was bad, not Malik Willis. Malik Willis is a fine backup quarterback. Malik Willis is 2-0 and with the Packers. Malik Willis executed flawlessly. Not only did Malik Willis execute flawlessly with what he was asked to do, but he made plays. How many times did Malik Willis escape the Titans' pressure and make a play with his legs on a bit, in a big situation? So not only did he do what he was asked, he did more than that. I was there. You know who the better football player is? You know who the better quarterback is? Malik Willis. Malik Willis is a better football player than Will Levis. I don't know how we can argue it right now. One player has three weeks in a row hurt his football team. If the Titans had Malik Willis at quarterback, they would have won the first two games because Malik Willis would not have made the critical mistakes. But the reality is, is Matt LaFleur is just such a superior coach to Brian Callahan right now. The Packers organization is such a superior organization to the Tennessee Titans that it is no surprise that all it took was Malik Willis to change jerseys and he turned into a really competent backup. Now, I don't think Malik Willis will ever be a starter in like a like a certified starter in the NFL, like you're going into the season with Malik Willis as your starting quarterback, and that's the plan. I think he's going to be a backup. But I think Will Levis is a backup, too. And I think that Malik Willis is a better backup than Will Levis. And I cannot believe that that's where I'm at. But after watching Malik Willis the last two weeks, watching Will Levis. But then, also, if Will Levis played for the Packers, he'd probably look like freaking Peyton Manning. Right? Right? It's probably not all Will Levis. It's just that he plays for this team. The Titans. The Canadian Football League version of the NFL. So, it's hard to know. It's hard to know exactly. I'm sure that Will Levis would be better with a different team, not this organization. But at the same time, he'd probably still be a turnover machine. He'd probably still give the game away. So, I don't know how you could watch what we just saw and not just be over the moon impressed by Malik Willis. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's a high school game plan and it's this and that and blah, blah. No, he did exactly what he needed to do. He ran a perfect game plan. 
Malik Willis was great in this game. And again, the Packers had some drops where he, de- like, think about some of those third and longs. Malik Willis didn't run. There was a, a couple fans behind me, Titans fans, who kept saying, all he can do is run. No, he proved you wrong. Malik Willis stood in the pocket, went through his progressions, and delivered accurate footballs on time to his receivers for big explosive plays in disadvantageous situations. Malik Willis was far better than Will Levis in this game. And was Malik Willis's last two games have been better than any game Will Levis played this year. That's the facts. Um, I'm just going to be 100% honest with you. I, I do not believe in Will Levis anymore. 0%. Titans need to start looking at quarterbacks. Um, that's a reality here. And again, a lot of you guys are going to blame the O-line. Say, oh, Levis was fine in this game. Levis, it's not Levis's fault. The O-line is so bad. Both the things can be true at once. The O-line is the worst offensive line in the NFL, and Will Levis is not a starting quarterback in the NFL either. We have our answers. It sucks that it happened this quick, but we know the truth. And for those of you saying put Mason Rudolph in, what's Mason Rudolph going to do? He's a backup too. The Titans have two backup quarterbacks and the worst offensive line in the league. What, I mean, what difference is it going to make? Play Will Levis. Let him tank your season and lead you to your next quarterback. Now, it's the Tennessee Titans. So, will the quarterback work? No. No. It won't. But I guess we'll try again next year. Because this season is over. It's over. Titans aren't making the playoffs. They're not going to have a winning record. They're not going to be a competitive team. And... They may beat the Dolphins and Skylar Thompson next week. But they ain't beating the Colts. And they ain't beating the Bills. And they ain't beating the Lions. This team's probably going to be one and six at best. This probably is going to be one of the top three worst teams in the NFL this year. The haters were right, folks. The haters were right. And um, I was wrong about Malik Willis. And a lot of you guys listening to this show Oh, Malik Willis, an apology as well. It wasn't him. It was us. It wasn't him. It was us. The Titans are a clown show organization. And every player that wears the jersey is a worse version of themselves because they play here. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, think A.J. Brown goes to Philadelphia, sets their season's single season record in receiving yards. You know, it's just like, Man, I have a broken spirit. Not going to lie to you. After watching the Packers fans coming in there and invade Nashville like that, and then watching what the Titans did in response on the field. Man, when will the pain and suffering stop? 25 years. Crazy, man. Before I burst into tears, uh, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to be back with you guys tomorrow. And we're going to, I mean, basically keep talking about why this team sucks. It's crazy, man. Crazy how disappointed I am and how this season has started. They fired Vrabel, fired John Robb, got rid of Tannehill. I mean, where do you go? Where do you go from here? This is this is the bottom of the barrel, folks. Bottom of the barrel. But I guess. Only where only way to go is up, right? That's what they say. Well, we'll we'll hold on to that. But that's gonna do it for me today, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked On Titans. Mm-hmm.